So the examples that we've done in chapters 1 and 2 show how to use ease to obtain a single solution to a set of equations. In engineering design problems, we often want to run a parametric study in which the effect of one variable, sometimes we call this the independent variable, on another variable, the dependent variable, is explored and examined. This type of study is accomplished in ease using a parametric table. In order to provide some context for this discussion, let's return to example E2.1. And there's a link to this example uh, in the description. Uh, but this example, it, which is shown here, determined the resultant force on an eye bolt uh, that was subject to three different forces, F1, F2, and F3. And here's the ease solution that we developed in this example. And you can see here are the three forces. We add them together and then we can get the angle and the magnitude of the resultant force. So we might want to examine how the magnitude and the angle of the resultant force um, change as we change the loading condition. So for example, let's uh, vary the magnitude of this force F1 and see how that affects uh, the resultant force's magnitude and angle. So to do this, um, we're going to need a parametric table. And um, the first thing we're going to have to do is create a variable, which we'll call mag F1, uh, that we can assign uh, and use it to set the magnitude of the force F1. So here, mag F1 is 200 pounds. And um, I will, inside of this vector assign polar command, use mag F1. I get the same solution, but now I have a variable that I can um, change in my parametric study. So the next thing we need to do is create a parametric table. So let's select new parametric table from the tables menu. And you get this uh, dialog. And um, on the left side, you get a list of all the variables that are included in your um, equations. So here you can see all of my vector variables have um, variables corresponding to each of their components here. So we want to... Um, take the variables from this left box and um, select the uh, variables that we're interested in uh, looking at and put them into the right box and that'll be the box that has the variables that will be put into the parametric table. So basically highlight the independent and the dependent variables of interest from this list and then we'll add them to uh, the second list. So here um, the independent variable is mag F1, so definitely we want that. And then the dependent variables that we want to look at are uh, mag R and angle R, so the magnitude and the angle of the resultant force. So now I have this list of um, three variables on the right, uh, and uh, we'll set OK. And we get this uh, parametric table. So by default, there's 10 runs or 10 rows in this table. You can, you can add more runs if you'd like by <coughs> selecting Insert Delete Runs from the Tables menu here. Or if you'd rather, just right click on any run number and select Insert or Delete Runs. Uh, there's a column here for every one of the variables that we included in the table. And we can also add columns, which corresponds to adding more variables to our parametric study uh, just by selecting uh, Insert Delete Variables from the tables menu or by right clicking on any um, column and selecting insert column or delete column. All right, so uh, now we have our parametric table and we need to set up the range of the uh, independent variable that we want to consider. And we do that by um, using the alter values function. So here <coughs> we will um, want to fill in this column that corresponds to mag F1 with different values of that magnitude that we want to study. And the easiest way to do that is you right click on the column header here and you select alter values. And uh, that'll bring up this dialog which specifies how you want to alter the variable values in that column. So here maybe I want to look at uh, magnitudes that go from 100 to 1000 pounds. And then here I can specify the pattern I want to use to vary those. So I'm just going to vary them linearly. Uh, you know, uh, from 100 to 1,000. And if I click OK, uh, you can see how it's filled in this column here. Um, at this point, I'm ready to solve the parametric table. So to solve a parametric table, the way you got to think about this is um, what Ease is going to do is go 
um, starting in run one, at least by default, start in run one and look across and see which of these variables uh, have been set. So in this case, it'll look across and see that the magnitude of F1 is set to 100. So these will then go to the equations window, uh, essentially type in an equation that says magnitude of F1 equals 100, solve, and then from the solution, it will fill in the other um, columns that aren't filled in here, right? So um, to solve the table, you would select uh, solve table, or you can use the F3 shortcut, and we'll hit say OK. And um, what we'll find is that uh, we run into a problem. And of course, the problem is that the magnitude of F1 is already set to be 200 pounds in the equations window. And now when we run run one, Ease is trying to set it to 100 pounds, and um, that over constrains the problem. And of course, th that can't happen. So what we need to do is um, remove the equation in the equations window that sets magnitude of F1 to 200 pounds, right? And one way to do this, and we'll talk about another way here in a little bit, but one way is you just um, highlight that equation, and then you right click and you select um, comment, and it'll comment it out, which means it basically removes it temporarily. So now when I run the table, so solve table from the calculate menu, you can see that it runs fine, <coughs> and I have carried out a parametric study. Right? If I look at what I've done here, I can look at for each of these values of the magnitude of F1, how the magnitude of the resultant force changes. So it actually does something kind of interesting here. First it goes down and then it goes up again, and how the angle uh, of the resultant force changes. So one last thing to talk about is uh, dollar if uh, directives, which are really handy for this kind of a, a study. So in order to run the parametric table here, I had to comment out the line uh, in the equations window that specified the value of mag F1. And uh, that temporarily removed that line of code. If I want to bring it back now, I have to highlight it and now hit undo comment. And that brings us back and now I can solve my equations um, but you see, I, I have to take that step uh, every time I want to switch from solving a parametric table to just solving the equations, and that's not um, great. So a more elegant method for removing one or more lines of code uh, is to use the dollar if directive, right? And the dollar if directive is used according to um, this basic uh, convention. So you have dollar if some condition. And then you have a bunch of lines that will be executed if the condition is true. And then optionally, if you want, you can have dollar else. And there you'll have a bunch of lines that will be executed if the condition is false. Uh, equivalently, you can use dollar if not, in which case you just sort of reverse which set of, of lines are, are executed. This condition has to be something that um, uh, evaluates to either true or false depending on how ease is being run and there's a whole bunch of different conditions the only one that's really important here is a parametric table so parametric table evaluates to true when the equations are being solved from a parametric table otherwise it evaluates to false so if i want to i can just put dollar if not parametric um, above my uh, equation here and then dollar end if uh, below my equation and the result is going to be that if I run this ease program using a parametric table, then um, this line will be removed, which means the parametric table will work fine. If I run uh, the uh, uh, ease program uh, just using solve, so F2 or solve, then because I'm not using a parametric table, um, this line will be included and it'll run fine that way as well. So I can, without having to toggle between commenting and uncommenting variables, I can run this program uh, in either form, which is really uh, pretty handy.